Elimination of the consequences of the Chernobyl accident can be summed up in two words, sarcophagus and decontamination. They will be discussed in this video. Since there is a lot of material on this topic, I decided to divide it into several videos. However, this material will still not give you an idea of how much work lies behind these two words. Dot. Please support my channel, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, so you won't miss any new parts. Dot. So, let's get started. This is part 1. Building cyclopean walls in no time at all, dispersing clouds, dusting, washing cities, hiking into the realm of death, clearing debris, burying phony crap and earth. When the machinery fails, the men go into battle. The first stalkers. And the young zone gathers its first harvest. From the recollections of one of the liquidators at Chernobyl. The fragments of fuel rods lay like mines, you didn't see them. It was impossible to distinguish them. Only by the movement of the arrow, ah, here it goes. I knew it was there. I jumped back. Because if I had stepped on the fuel element, I could have lost my leg. Sarcophagus The idea to cover the emergency unit was first voiced by academician Velikov back in May, but at the beginning of the month there was no time to do so. Designing the object shelter, as it was officially called, began on May 20. However, its concept was not actually approved until July. Worked through 18 options. The terms of reference were only approved on August 12. The main contractor was the USSR Ministry of Medium Machine Building, Mince Red Mash, and the ubiquitous IAE, International Atomic Energy Agency. The main contractor was the USSR Ministry of Medium Machine Building, Mince Red Mash, the scientific advisor was the ubiquitous IAE. It was necessary to close all rifts and cavities, no matter whether with concrete, soil or heavy shields, as long as the radiation remained inside. We, however, decided on the monolithic concrete as the most convenient material. On this basis we began the design work. There were a lot of difficulties, because nobody knew the state of the block constructions. Many expeditions went inside, searching for fuel, studying the internal contamination. Another of their tasks was to investigate the condition of the block's structures. The construction of the sarcophagus began with the so-called pioneer walls height of 5.75 meters on the north side and 8.4 meters in the west and south. Their task was to cut off highly radioactive debris from the walls so that people could work on the sarcophagus. On the north, the pioneer wall was supplemented with 12-meter high cascading walls. All this allowed to provide biological protection in the most contaminated part. The block was also protected from the east, the monolithic protective wall separating block number 3 from block number 4 was the very first. Its thickness is 2.3 meters. The west wall was closed by a new wall and reinforced by buttresses 50 meters high. This wall is steel, and it had to be completely concreted on the inside, and therefore the inside was not protected against corrosion. In reality, the average height of the concrete is 2 meters, the rest of it is open and actively corroded. The north wall was cascaded for a reason. This scheme allowed, firstly, to bury a bunch of radioactive junk thrown outdoors, which also served to strengthen the wall, and secondly, it allowed to gradually get closer to the rift, reducing the size of the roof of the future shelter. The upper part of the wall had hollow metal sections reinforced by buttresses. The famous western wall with buttresses to its full height, it is the view from the observation deck of CHNPP. Some kind of girder, probably, one of the beams for ceiling. An element of the roof. The builders, I guess, helped to direct it. A separate story is the construction of the slab. Several new beams had to be installed to build the new roof over the former reactor. These beams were huge and heavy and it was necessary to install them on structures of unknown condition. Let's start with the octopus girder closest to the turbine hall. It holds part of the new wall, which covers the destroyed derator story on the side. This wall also supports the roof, which connects the wall to the next girder, the mammoth girder. The octopus girder was installed on the old building structures, which were severely deformed, and therefore their condition was questionable. In general, the entire building of the block along the 45 and 46 axes was as if it had been squeezed to the side. 
This can be clearly seen on the station layout, made by the Dean Tuxham. To strengthen the octopus girder, it was tied to other building structures of the same dubious condition. That same layout. Pay particular attention to the right side, you can see the warping of the block structures. The support stood on a backfill of rubble and bags of water and cement and was a metal truss. To the east, the mammoth rested on a new support, which had an exterior metal liner and was supposed to be completely concreted on the inside. In reality, however, this was not the case. During the construction, in order to save money, we decided to put foam mats inside, along with the concrete, which would partially fill the structure of this support. Everything would have been fine, but the mats began to be poured even before the concrete had set properly, and they passed through it, getting into the foundation of the future support, and some of them even went beyond its limits. The cement was spared during the pouring, so the east pylon of the mammoth girder is standing on a sandy powder base. The B1-B2 girder block that was supposed to hold the horizontal slab of the reactor cavity also rests on structures that were not made the way they should have been. In the southwest, it was originally planned to be supported by the wall along axis 50, it is now covered by the western buttress wall, but it turned out that this wall is badly damaged and cannot serve as a support. What to do? A new support was built. This support was to be similar to the eastern pillar of the mammoth girder. It seemed to have spared no concrete, but it went inside the building through the breaks, so the beam is supported by metal plates that are partially poured with concrete. To the east, the girder block rests on the preserved original walls of the ventilation shafts. How it was arranged. 1. Beam B1, beam B2 is behind it. 2. The pipe reel of the roof. 3. Top of wall along axis 50, reinforced with a corset. 4. Exhaust shaft. 5. Mammoth beam. 6. Rear support of the beam mammoth. 7. Eastern support of the mammoth girder. 8. Octopus girder. The side slab, which is not over the reactor collapse, is metal sheets resting on the aforementioned beams. The center roof, on the other hand, is laminated. There are 27 tubes of 34.5 meters in length and 1,220 millimeters in thickness laid on the beams. On them the metal roof is comfortably located. The damaged roof of the machine hall was covered with a new roof separately. This is how concrete pumps were installed during construction of the sarcophagus. The process of concreting. Putzmeister concrete pump. Concrete pump swing. Speaking of concrete, in the zone before the explosion worked one cement plant, but after the accident, it was necessary to urgently build three more. Sarcophagus demanded a myriad of it, which means it was also necessary to find a huge number of transport. Since machinery from inside the zone could not go out, then were equipped with special platforms for transshipment of concrete imported from the Big Earth. Station for transferring concrete from dump trucks to CAMAZ mixers. Kamaz with a paltry amount of lead. Specially converted KRAZ trucks with lead cabins. Concrete walls were built by remote concreting method. Special blocks were placed in the place of the future walls, in which the concrete was fed from a distance of 150 to 200 meters. The building constructions were erected with the foreign-made Demag and Libra cranes, some of which were equipped with TV control. The workers of the majority of the construction enterprises of the Ministry of Special Machine Building as well as the military were involved in the work. The construction of such a complex and unusual structure in such difficult conditions took only 5.5 months, end of May, November 1986. This, undoubtedly, is an unparalleled performance. Despite all its problems, the sarcophagus is a unique structure. That was the first part. In the next parts, I will talk about the bio-robots, the people who did the reconnaissance and most dangerous work at Chernobyl. I will talk about the equipment they used and the strange disease symptoms the rescuers experienced. This will be a very interesting video. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up. I read your comments and if possible answer any questions you ask me.